having a good day so far. Um, I'm going to be painting another NPC from Welcome to Nexus, and today it's going to be Walter Dwyer. I'm very excited to paint Walter. Um, last week I painted his sister Winter Dwyer, and I had a lot of fun doing that. And um, let me go. I'm gonna go grab it really quick because I want to see because they are twins. I don't have it in here. It's all good. Anyways, they are twins. So, um, it's going to be fun painting. This is the first of the twins I think I've painted. It's going to be fun. Hello, Mal. I hope you're having a good day. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. But yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, I have most of the colors out from last week, actually. The same ones I used for winter, so that's good. So I can match those colors. Because again, uh, the Dwyer twins are very popular characters for good reason. Because they're amazing. I love them so much. I love them when I played this campaign. Do I need more paint? Um, I love them when I played this campaign. Um, they've in this version, the version that is currently being streamed on Casper Oliver's Twitch channel. Um, they. Are, have been dubbed by the players and by the fans in the chat. Um, beef and oh, beef with gun and beef two with gun. That's that's what they've been been dubbed. Yay! No, definitely you have fun with your partner. You support them. That that sounds like a lot of fun. And tell uh, tell him congratulations also on doing your first stream because that's super exciting. That's really exciting. It, it's a lot of fun doing streaming, and I hope it's something he enjoys. Yeah, yeah. Your Casper Oliver VO for voiceover. That's where you can find Welcome to Nexless streaming on um, Twitch. Monday is at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's a really good time. Um, if you're watching the YouTube version of this as a replay, I will include the link to that in the description. So you can tune in and watch it actual play. Well, yay! Well, happy birthday to your partner then. That's exciting. I, I hope he has fun doing that on his birthday. But yeah. Um, yeah, welcome to Nexus streaming on Twitch on Casper Oliver VO channel. It's a lot of fun. And if you follow me on social media, You've definitely seen me posting about it, because I post about it a lot, because I'm super hyped about it. I love it so much. Um, so, you you probably have seen stuff about it if you follow me on social media. But I will continue posting about it, so if you, if you are new to this and you haven't seen this stuff, just like look up the hashtag Welcome to Nexless uh, on Twitter, or just go to any of like Casper's um, social media channels. Um, like on most things like Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that, it's just Casper Oliver, uh, which is C-A-S-P-E-R-O-L-I-V-E-R, -E and then V-O for voiceover. On most social media channels, you can find you can find that, uh, and then you can go on their channel and see their YouTube um, and their Twitch streaming and. All that fun stuff, so you can watch the actual play like in real time if you want, because it's a really fun time. But yeah, I'm I'm excited to paint to paint Walter, also known as Beef with Gun. It's just a nickname that tickles me a lot. <laughs> I'm very excited. I'm also real quick, as I'm getting everything set up and just kind of chatting. Um, I'm also going to pull up my reference images because I know that they're twins, so I know that what I did for winter last week, a lot of that will apply, uh, which is why I have the same colors and fun stuff like that. Um, but, let me see. But I also have some reference images, like face claim references. Face claim refer references. My, my, my speaking... Muscles are not awake, apparently. Okay. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Mostly I was trying to see, like, 
I know that they look similar and like I did more of an angular jaw for winter last week. So that's what I'm seeing in these face claim images. Um, I was just mostly also trying to see like what their hairstyles are like so I can properly paint. All right, well, it's time to get started. Uh, this week I did not leave my paintbrushes with paint on them, but I did leave them soaking in the water. So, they they still don't have loose bristles. I guess I'd be more concerned about that if uh, I paid, you know, a lot, because I do know there's a lot of expensive paintbrushes. Um, but yeah. But anyways, and I'm really excited because next week I'm going to be painting Lily Dwyer, which I'm very excited. Uh, there in the last session was some big and important revelations about winter, not winter, Lily rather. Um, so I'm hoping that in, in all of this, let me see if my email will open no. Um, I'm hoping that I can do justice to, she's just so cool, Lily Dwyer. Uh, but yeah, anyways, last session, there were some interesting developments. Um, some things involving Lily, some, some angst. I'm not going to give away what actually happened. You'll have to look that up. You'll have to watch the replay because I'm not going to give spoilers on my stream, but I will entice you to watch it by saying that it was really cool and Lily is a badass. So I highly encourage I highly encourage you to check that out. So I'm just trying to pull up one more reference images. Is this going to work? Which email am I in? Aha. I'm, just, I'm trying to find it because I don't have my... Uh... Aha, I found it. Yes. Okay. That was all I needed. I just wanted to pull up my reference image of, of uh, winter. Just so I can like... Okay. Now I've got it. I thought I had the art in here because I have a bunch of my other Welcome to Nexus art in here. Did I have Walt? Did I have Winter? No, I did not. But yeah, last session was a really good session. Lots of uh, fun things were revealed. So I highly encourage you to watch the view on demand version of it if you haven't done so already. Or tune in, watch it live. Mondays at 8.30 on the on the Twitch channel. But yeah. I've, I've had a lot of fun working on these paintings so far, and I still have still have a decent number of, of NPCs to paint. And I do also plan on painting the player characters at some point as well. But first I want to get through the NPCs because that was the first thing I started on. But yeah, next week's going to be Lily Dwyer, and then after that, figure out what happens. After after that, probably, I'll probably actually move on to um, Amir's little grouping, um, as far as NPCs go. So I'll probably do Dimitri and Viren after I do Lily next week. Um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, this is me trying to figure out face shapes. But yeah, I hope everybody's day is going well so far. Um, my day's been pretty good so far. Start off a little unmotivated, but after I got up and got going, got a lot better. Um, and I also... Like I had to go pick up something, so I had to go do that. Go to a little appointment for that. But that went well. So, because of that, um, I didn't have that much time to do a lot of things today prior to the stream. But, I do have plans to do some other stuff later. Like, I have some yard work and stuff that needs to be done. And it's nice. Daylight savings has happened, so now I have an extra hour 
each day to do stuff. A hour of sunlight. Because uh, when you live in Florida, when the sun goes down, the mosquitoes come out. And they're nasty. They have been bitten by them um, more times than I can count. And I know like other places I've lived, like the Midwest, also have bad mosquitoes, at least in some parts of it. But the Florida mosquitoes are especially aggressive at certain times of the day. Um, kind of like uh, when I went to the Everglades. That was There was a lot of mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah. It was a sad thing about like mosquitoes and Florida mosquitoes, for example, is I've been to Costa Rica and there were less mosquitoes in Costa Rica in the rainforest than there were in Florida, in the Everglades. Which is just wild to me, because you picture like a literal rainforest having way more mosquitoes. But no, Everglades still have way, way, way more. I went to both in the rainy seasons, respectively, for each one. So <laughs> I think it's a pretty fair assessment. There's just way more mosquitoes in Florida. <laughs> and they're way more aggressive. <laughs> But something we'll have to tell some more of my travel stories. Because I haven't got to travel that much. And <laughs> bummer, COVID showed up in a time that for the past, like, to be fair, like, for the past two or three years before then I had been doing some traveling before COVID showed up. Um, but then it really did put a damper because, like, the thing is, okay, let's look at my, my reference photos. Um, the thing is, is that, like, in 2016, I went on my road trip. No, no, no. It was uh, 2017. 2017, I went on my road trip. Yeah, 2017. Damn, now I don't remember. All right, either 2016 or 2017, I went on my, my Florida road trip. It was my first vacation ever. It started off a long stream of me going to a lot of concerts, um, especially like classic rock and pop rock and things like that type concerts. Um, and like, I went to so many yacht rock <laughs> concerts. It's, that's a style of music which... I should say it's like a guilty pleasure, except I'm not guilty about the fact that I like that. I like, you know, um, like Hall and Oates and the Christopher Cross and a bunch of other stuff like that. My brain is drawing a blank right now on Yacht Rock bands. Um... But anyways, but yeah, in the span of between 2017 and 2019, I went to a total of, well, I don't remember how many concerts I went to, but I did see more than 100 bands in concert in that short span. I was going to a couple concerts a month, sometimes a couple concerts in a week. Um, I had the time and I had the finances to do so so I was like you know and, and also like ever since I've been a teenager like I'm not quite as much into it now but classic rock and pop music like specifically from the 60s 70s and 80s um has been a hyper fixation of mine I know a lot of weird and random facts about stuff like that and I've absorbed so much information because I've read I've read so many like books and not so much documentaries but I've read a lot of books about music from that era so I have a large collection of random facts that my brain has clung to um about classic rock and pop um and it's one of those things like I was raised listening to it Beyond that, I can't really explain 
like what the draw of it is to me, but I still really do love that style of music. And I've like, as I've made more friends and stuff, I've definitely tried to branch out into like listening to more modern music as well, because I did go through a long period of time where it was like pretty much only listen to classic rock and pop, which is great, but I also wanted to expand my horizons a bit because like there's a lot of really good more modern music as well. And I didn't want to be like the one person that everyone else is talking about some modern music and I'm like, who's that? What's that? <laughs> so I, I'm lucky now that I have some friends who have really good taste in music. Um, for example, Casper has a great taste in music. Their playlists are amazing. Um, and like, I know they're probably not listening to this right now, but their playlists are super good and you should, you should go on their Spotify or look on their social media. Cause a lot of times they do post on social media links to their playlist, but they make excellent playlists for like different OCs of theirs. They're so good at making playlists. Like and they have a super good taste in music. And there's so many songs. <laughs> a large, let's put it this way. A large portion of the modern music that I that I like and know about came from them recommending it to me. So they have a very good taste in music. And you should check out their playlists if you haven't already. Particularly if you like their OCs. Um, they have really good OC playlists. So because of that. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I, I, I went to all those concerts because I could and because I wanted to. And I was like, well, you know, a lot of these people are going to retire or, you know, not going to be alive for forever. So I should go see them now because they're people who are, you know, like did songs that were important to me. Did songs that helped me through rough patches in my life. So like I want to honor that by going to see them in real life. And I've had, I've had so many good experiences at concerts. And again, I, I do have a list on my website of all the concerts I've been to. I don't have it in memory, but I've seen some examples. I've seen the band Queen, Hall and Oates, Elton John, The Who, um, I saw Tears for Fears, Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys, the Eagles, Jimmy Buffett. I'm trying to think of things because there's a lot of one hit wonder type people that I saw whose names probably wouldn't be as familiar. Um, like the Drifters and Platters and stuff like those old doo wop groups. I saw those at the Starbucks. Oh, I saw, I saw um, Willie Nelson. Um, Electric Light Orchestra. I've seen a lot. There's way more than that. Those are just some that come to mind. Um, I'm glad I have a list because I would not remember if I didn't have a list. <laughs> There's a lot. And it was all in three years. Um, but yeah, I started, I was like doing concerts all the time. And also traveling a pretty lot. To be fair, I did for a lot of the travels that I did. I did go into debt some. Because I was like, I've got a credit card. I can do this. And, like, some of the things I wanted to do were time sensitive. Like, I need to go do this before you know, this thing happens. And, like, at the time, it was kind of a bummer because I spent money on traveling that I, you know, put on my credit cards and didn't have. Which, you know, I'm still paying off now. Paying interest on, et cetera, et cetera. All, all the fun credit card things. But I am glad that I had those experiences when I did because no one knew how much the world would change in that time. So I'm lucky and blessed that I had the the money and time and, you know, ability to do those things. Because a lot of things are going to be different now from like a going and traveling and going to museums type of thing. I'm glad I did the things when, when I did them. And like, my Florida road trip included a lot of cool things. Like, I live in the Tampa area, so it included stuff like, um, I, I, I wanted to leave the Tampa area on my road trip, but I went to places like the Florida Keys, and I went parasailing. I went snorkeling in the Florida Keys. Um, I went to different, um, like I went to you know, St. Augustine and saw like the Castillo de San Marco 
um, I went to different marine parks and like the Miami Zoo and stuff like that to see different types of animals. I went to the, um, I can't remember what it's actually called. There's the really old, like, uh, monastery in Miami, um, that they actually shipped over from Spain, if I'm remembering correctly. I saw that. That was cool. Um, getting to, like, watch a sunset from the Naples Pier. Oh, and I went to the Everglades for the first of two times I've been to the Everglades. Like, visit. I've been through the Everglades more times than that for murder mystery work going to shows on the opposite coast of Florida. But, yeah, I, I did a lot of my road trip. And then other places I've traveled included, um, I went to Houston, Texas in, in 2017 is when I went to Houston. So I think my road trip happened in 2016. Mm. No, actually it's 2017. Yeah, okay, it must have been 2017. But anyways, uh, in Houston, the reason I was going to Houston is because the band Queen was going on tour. For the first time in like 20 years in America, I think. I might be, I might be thinking of Electric Light Orchestra. Um, but anyways, I was like, I have to go see them because when I was a teenager... They were my favorite band ever. And because of that, just, just trying to focus on drawing the shoulder line. <laughs> Give me just a second. Queen was a really important band to me when I was a teenager. Both as I was starting to come to terms of being queer. Uh, so people like Freddie Mercury were an inspiration to me. And I just really love their music. And I discovered their music when I was going through a dark time in my teenage years. Uh, and they, like them as a band, definitely became a hyperfixation of mine. So because of that, like when I heard that they were going on tour in America, I'm like, I need to go see them. Problem is, is that the closest city they were coming to, to Florida, um, was Houston. I mean, there's other couple cities that were kind of similar, but I'm like, Houston sounds good. So that was my first time going on an airplane ever. It was, it was, uh, that was actually a good experience on an airplane. I've had a lot of random dramatic experiences on airplanes. <laughs> um, for example, when I was going to Costa Rica, we were all on the plane, and then they're like, wait, we gotta hold up the plane longer because... Somebody's bags got on the plane, but the person never got on the plane, so we have to take all the bags off for security reasons, and then, you know, find and make sure that we've gotten all this person's luggage off. And, like, that makes sense, and I totally, I'm glad that they do all the stuff that they do. Um, but it was still just, like, a dramatic experience on a plane. Uh, or, um, another, I'll tell you about another dramatic experience in a minute. Um. But yeah, it was, when I went to Houston, it was fun. I went to, I really can't, I can't remember the names of a lot of places that I went. Um, I crammed many, many things into my travels in a short period of time. I was in Houston for less than 24 hours. While I was there, I went to a cool gemstone store. I went to an art museum. In addition to going to the Queen concert, uh, I went to see that big waterfall thing that they have in downtown Houston. Went to... The mall that they had there, which is like the sixth biggest mall in America, I think. Um, I did a lot of things in less than 24 hours. Oh, I went to a botanical garden. Oh, no, two botanical gardens. I did a lot of things. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then another dramatic story. So, like, about a year later, uh, Electric Light Orchestra was coming to America. Problem. They were only coming to a couple places in America. They were also a band which was really important to me during my teenage years. That I very much wanted to see in concert. Because also I just love their music. Closest city. Or at least all the cities were kind of about the same distance. 
Denver, Colorado, which is really far from Florida. Very far. Um, so I was like, I'm going to go to Denver. Because when I was up there, I'm like, if I go to Denver, I can also go to the Rocky Mountains, which is like, ever since I'm a kid, I've always wanted to visit the national, like the, all the national parks. And I believe the Everglades is a national park. So I've been there, but I'd never been to any others other than the Everglades. So because of that, I was like, because of that, I was like, okay, well, um, I can go up there and I can, you know, do double duty. I can drive through the Trail Ridge Road, which is like the main road that goes through the center of the Rocky Mountains. I can do that and go to my concert. Again, a trip of a, about 24 hours in the city. Um, but the problem when I, because I had a um, changeover in Houston, I'm like, that'd be fine. No problem. When I got to Houston to get on my connecting flight, um, I learned that my flight from Houston to Denver had been canceled. Hey, Casper. Thank you for lurking. I love you too. I appreciate if. If you're listening and you can hear me, I appreciate you being here even if you are, you know, busy doing a show. I still appreciate that. So, thank you. I'm assuming that Walter would wear a leather jacket. And then, like, a button-down. That's what I picture. If his outfit isn't what he would wear, I'm sorry. (laughs) But I feel like he would wear this. But anyways... So, the, um, the thing is, it's like, so, yeah, I got to Houston. I had a not very fun flight, for uh, motion sickness reasons, to Houston. And I got off the flight, and I was looking at the, the flight board. There might be a more formal name for it, but the board that shows all the flights. I'm like, I saw my flight was canceled. I'm like, What? So I had to go like halfway across the airport, it's really far, to go to the customer service desk. And they were like, everyone else in line was also from the same flight that had been canceled. And they were all also trying to take up these seats. And a lot of the flights wouldn't work. And they're like, you want to do this flight? I'm like, no, I have to be in you know Denver by this time. So they had to do a whole bunch of stuff and they eventually found me a seat on a flight, which was going to be leaving really soon. Um... And it was going to be to Phoenix, Arizona, and then from Phoenix to Denver. So it worked out okay. Um, but that was like, it was one of those me flying in by the seat of my pants kind of things. Which is a, <laughs> I can travel normally with people and be chill and not cram a million things into the time that I'm going somewhere and not rush around constantly. But when I travel by myself, it's very much that way. Um, it's like me making to the airport barely in time. <laughs> it's, it's me when I travel by myself. <laughs> and I, it's always worked out, but it's very much precise. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I got to Denver after all these connecting flights. Very limited time. Um, I had enough time to pick up my rental car and then enough time to go uh, get Rocky Mountain Oysters at, it might be called a Buckeye Exchange, I can't remember. There's there's a restaurant that has meat and it's a famous restaurant in Denver and it's like, this is a good place to get Rocky Mountain Oysters, so that was where I got mine. Um, but they were really good. I knew what they were, because that's when I tell people I've had Rocky Mountain Oysters. The people's question is always, but do you know what they are? And yes, I did know what they are. And because I am the kind of weird, adventurous eater, then I, of course, wanted to try them. And try them, like, in the place that they're famous. It's kind of like when I went to the Everglades the second time, I tried alligator while I was down there. Because it's a meat that I've always been curious to try. I'm like, I'm going to try these meats in the places that are like quintessential places for these meats. So I had alligator in, at the Everglades Alligator Restaurant in the Everglades. It was like right outside the Everglades. It was really good. 
yeah, I, I was glad to try the Rocky Mountain Oysters and glad to, I know what I'm going to do. He's going to have, he's going to have a bit of plaid also. Um, but yeah, I was, I was excited to try Rocky Mountain Oysters in like the place that's famous for them and like a nice, good restaurant to get good ones and make a good judgment of them as a food but they were good they tasted like calamari but just not fishy so i i enjoyed them but anyways so yeah i was up there i had enough time to go to the electric light orchestra concert which was amazing by the way i'm really really glad that i got to go i was very lucky in that sense um and then I had enough time to get a couple hours of sleep on my very uncomfortable mattress. <laughs> I gotta tell a story about this Denver hotel. Um, it was a very cheap hotel. It was the cheapest thing that wasn't a hostel. And generally when I travel by myself, um, I book myself the cheapest thing that's not a hostel. That's like the joke that I make to people. The cheapest thing that I get a private room I'm gonna go for it because I I like saving as much money when I travel as possible so that I can spend money on things that matter to me so when I'm going on a vacation to me it's never oh I want to spend so much time at this fun hotel a hotel is literally just for sleeping and storing my stuff I don't care what amenities it has as long as it's decent enough that it's not like I wouldn't go somewhere if it was the cheapest if it was like a bunch of complaints about it like we had bed bugs or something I wouldn't go there then but in many situations the cheapest thing that's not a hostel will be my hotel um but anyways there enough time to get a couple hours of sleep oh I know I was gonna tell you the story about this hotel room where it was situated it was situated by the Denver airport it was like an airport hotel um I can't remember the name of the hotel, but anyways, um, I don't know who's, who's watching has seen the movie My Cousin Vinny. In that movie, their hotel that they stay in is really cheap, and the hotel they stay in has a train that goes right by it in the middle of the night every night. This hotel was basically that. It had planes flying over all night because it was by the airport it wasn't soundproof i've stayed in a lot of airport hotels before don't get me wrong usually they're okay usually they're soundproof this wasn't soundproof very well at all so it was very loud uh in front of it was a very large highway and there's a lot of semis going by all night long which i could hear and then literally right behind the back of the parking lot literally right behind the back of the parking lot a train track and you know what came by in the middle of the night? A train. It, it, it was, I find it funny. Simply because it was, it was so, just like, more dramatic than you would expect. So yeah, it, I didn't have long to sleep anyway, so I was okay with it not being a good night's sleep. But then I woke up at like 5 in the morning after getting back late from the concert the other night. And then I'm like, I'm going to drive Trow Ridge Mountain, Mountain, um, Trow Ridge Road through the mountains, rather. And I'm going to do this whole, this whole route, which if I time it perfectly, I'll get to the airport barely in time. Like, when I say barely in time, I mean like about an hour before my flight leaves, which I know isn't recommended. I know it's recommended you leave longer. <laughs> I've never been good about that, but I've always I've always gotten there in time. Um, but yeah, so I did do this route. It was like a five hour trip. That's why Rocky Mountains are far away from Denver. You wouldn't think that because you're like, oh, it's Colorado. It's far. Um, and it was funny because I was like, I was this little Floridian wearing my shorts. And I got up to go to the bathroom at the bathroom of the Rocky Mountains, at the entrance to the park. And I was like, it's cold out here. It wasn't that cold that part, but as I got up in the mountains, 
It was very cold. I was wearing shorts. I didn't care. I was the weird Floridian. But yeah, it was it's like a it's like two hours or so to get to uh, the Rocky Mountains from Denver, and then two hours back. But and it's like an hour to go across Trail Ridge Road. I didn't have as much time as I would have liked to spend, you know, looking at the scenery or anything. But I just want, I wanted to see the Rocky Mountains because I'm like I'm up here. I grew up. Oh, I was born rather in Seattle. Um, so that's cool, but I left when I was like four and I didn't live anywhere else that had mountains, so I hadn't seen mountains in a long time. Like I saw them when I was a really little kid, but I haven't seen them since then. So I wanted to see the mountains. Um, but yeah, I, I managed to get to the airport like an hour before and return my rental car like an hour before my flight left. I didn't, you know, have a bunch of spare time, but I got there in time and it was okay. <laughs> I got through security and everything with enough time to spare. <laughs> so yeah. Um but that that was that was kind of wild. Um and then in 2019 cuz that was this Denver trip was in 2018. In 2019 I went to two places, which I'm like at the time I was like why am I spending so much money on traveling? I'm now glad that I did because 2020, no, no yearly vacation. And I do want to remark, most of these trips I put on credit cards, to be honest. I may be like, oh, I'm telling you fancy travel stories. Most of them aren't as fancy as they sound. Um, most of them, most of them made me go into debt, which is something in the future I would like to avoid when I travel and try to rather just save up the money and spend that instead of putting it on credit card because obviously that's better. I was young though and newly bestowed with credit. And like my credit's fine from it, but it's just I'm still paying off the credit cards. It wasn't the best choice. But in hindsight, doing the things I did, I'm glad because again, things won't be the same again when the world is safer again to go out and do things. So I'm glad that I did get to have the experiences I had, you know, with the way things used to be. And that's why as I pay off my credit cards, I'm like, you know, I'm I am glad about this though. In my trips, I did make them as cheaply as possible by staying in cheap hotels. A lot of things I did in a lot of these places were free or just really low cost things. Like I would look up like free things to do in whatever place. And stay in a cheap hotel, get a cheap deal on a rental car, um, use Expedia to kind of, you know, bundle the stuff together because I have gotten a lot of really good prices from there and Travelocity and all the fun places but anyways Walter's getting a little plaid shirt that's what he's getting um not not so much a flannel but more just like a plaid button down because I have some like that and they're nice I feel like this also the shirt just has farm vibes which fits Walter well um, but anyways, uh, so in 2019, I went on my first international vacation to Costa Rica. And like, I have, I have a lot more stories in any of these places than these. These are just some of the stories. I wanted to go to Costa Rica to see sloths. I specifically wanted to see the oldest sloth in captivity, aka the famous Buttercup the Sloth, who you have probably seen stuff of online. She's like the ambassador sloth, like the most famous sloth from the sloth sanctuary. Um, so that, that was an interesting trip, especially considering it's my first international trip. So I had to get a passport and get some stuff like that beforehand. It was, it was a difficult trip, mostly because my Spanish abilities, my like knowledge of Spanish were very limited, very limited. So that made it tricky, me trying to communicate with people. Because they would say something and I was like, cool, I know like 10 Spanish words. I knew a bit more than that, but I didn't know very much of Spanish. And I knew obviously going into it that I would need to know Spanish, so I did learn some. Uh, but I didn't have internet when I was down there, so I didn't have a translator or anything. Because I didn't want to get the uh, SIM card. 
So I'm like, I'll be fine. I don't need a phone. It worked out okay. The people I encountered were really nice and helpful. And it was, there was something affirming about being able to find my way through a completely unfamiliar place, way different than anywhere I'd ever lived, um, on my own. There was something really cool about that. And with limited abilities, but like carving out a way to to get where I need to go. So, but yeah, I, I did a lot of cool things. I was in Costa Rica for only three days, including, I you know, going there and arriving and going there and coming home. I didn't get there until the kind of the middle of the afternoon on the first day because my flight was delayed a lot, which was okay, ultimately. So when I, the first day really, and I also want to note, there's one international airport in uh, Costa Rica and it's in uh, the capital city, San Jose. Problem, it, I think that's the capital city. I'm so sorry if that's not the capital city. I might be wrong. I just want to apologize because I may have said the wrong capital city. Anyways, what are the capital city of Costa Rica? Uh, I flew into there, but the city I was going to that had the sloth sanctuary uh, is on the opposite coast of Costa Rica, basically from their capital. Um, so, if I'm pronouncing it correctly and remembering correctly as Kawita, um, I might be wrong, and I'm really sorry if I've just butchered that pronunciation. But, um, but anyways, so, that was where I had to go. Um, and I had to take a five-hour bus trip across the country. Which also required buying a bus ticket in Spanish. Something which I did not really have the skills to do. And it was interesting, like, going somewhere like that because the first time, like, the first day I arrived, I was terrified. I didn't know how to use the money. I didn't know what, you know, how to communicate. I didn't know how to buy a bus ticket. I didn't know how to do anything. But being forced to kind of sink or swim on using Spanish, I learned quickly and I adapted. And I was like, oh, this is what you do. So by the time I left, I was just like saying like, excuse me and stuff as I was leaving the bus, but in Spanish. Um, and my pronunciation probably wasn't that good, which is why I'm not going to repeat it here. Um, but I, I think I got my point across. And I felt bad because I didn't know that much of the language. I definitely didn't expect people to be able to understand what I was saying that well. Because uh, it's my fault for not knowing that much Spanish. Um, but I, I made it work. And But it was funny like seeing like, I'm trying to learn language on Duolingo or Rosetta Stone. Like you learn it slowly. If you're put in a situation where you have to use that language, you learn it really quickly. Because you're like, I need to communicate with people. Cool. I don't speak the language. But then it's cool, your brain adapts like, oh, this is what you do. And then you suddenly know, like you, you get used to using it because you have to practice. And if you practice and you fail, you have to still communicate. There's a, there's a lot of adventure stories about Costa Rica, which I'll tell some other time. It, there, it, was, it was amazing. And also a lot of just cool and wild stories. All good stories but still just things that were like whoa that was wild um, things that were hard things that were a lot of fun but basically what I did uh, so I took the five-hour bus trip across the country the first day um, and then I went like in the second day went to the sloth sanctuary took the sloth tour got to go on a boat through like the river in Costa Rica um, that was, you know, behind the thing. So I got to go on like a riverboat ride. Um, I got to ride a horse on the beach and through the rainforest, including galloping. Um, I got to eat coffee and chocolate on the same property that the coffee and chocolate were grown on. I got to, um, I got to go on a night walk and see, like, 
red-eyed tree frogs, and uh, like a freshwater eel, and a bunch of cool spiders and other types of frogs. I think there's one called a cat frog because it makes like kind of a cat sound. And went on the tour of the jaguar sanctuary so I got to see it was also like a rescue sanctuary for sloths and jaguars and baby monkeys. And all that was on, I want to say all that stuff was on one day. <laughs> it was one day. That was some very pecking precise planning on my part. Um, but yeah, I got to do that. And the first day I was there, like, I did have a little bit of time for my bus left. So I, like, went shopping a little bit and bought some unique fruits I've never had before, which I can't remember right now. I have a bad memory for, like, the names of things that I do. I can picture them, but I can't remember what they're called. I got to eat some Nance fruit, I know. And there was another thing, but I can't remember what it was. I bought stuff, though. Um, and the last day, like, I went to their um, market, which I can't remember what it's called, in their capital city. And, like, didn't really buy stuff, but it was fun exploring it. Oh, I ate some uh, um, ceviche. I ate ceviche, because that's, like, a primary food. Not a primary food, but, like, a food that... It's like, this is something you should try if you go to Costa Rica. So, I got ceviche. Went shopping in a grocery store there and bought stuff with my limited ability to speak Spanish. I did a lot of cool things. It was a lot of fun. And it was all in three days, including two five-hour bus trips across the country, which took a lot of time. So, yeah. Uh, and then later, a couple months after that, I went to New York City for the first time. Which was a lot of fun. I went there because I wanted to see the camp exhibit at Met. The Metropolitan. Um, because me loving fashion, as everyone knows. And also, me being gay. I was like, I have to go to the camp exhibit. That was a really fun trip. I very much enjoyed it. Um, so, <laughs> I was also in New York City for three days. Hello, Cecil! Hope you're having a good day. I'm, like, kind of halfway done with painting Walter Dwyer. Um, but yeah, so New York City, again, I was there for three days, including arriving and coming home. In New York City, I went to the Statue of Liberty did the tour and stuff there. I didn't get to go into the Statue of Liberty because they were out of tickets for that tour that day by the time I got there. But I still got to go and, you know, walk around the base of it, which was really cool. I got to go up into the Rockefeller Center to the, you know, the top deck of it. Um, I, to be honest, I had a lot of fun riding on the subways. I had a lot of fun because it was, I had the unlimited Metro card for a week. So like however many subway rides I wanted to go on, I definitely saved money rather than buying them individually. Um, but I went and I, um, I went to the Metropolitan, I went to the Museum of Natural History, I went, got some New York food, like, uh, Pizza Suprema and, um, Papaya Hot Dog Stand? I know that's not what it's called, but it has Gray's Papaya. I think it's Gray's Papaya. I went to that one. I went to Times Square, um... I went to another art exhibit. I can't remember what that art museum is called. I went to the Color Factory, which was really fun. I went to, um, I don't know, what else did I do? I got, uh, egg cream at, like, uh, is it called Ray's Candy Shop? I am not remembering any of these names. I went to a place that's known for having good egg creams. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a good day, too. I haven't had a chance to do that much before doing my stream today. Uh, I had some stuff I needed to get done, so I did get that stuff done. I had to go pick up something. So I was able to do that and, like, go to a little little appointment. So that was easy. I got that done. I'm having fun painting and have more stuff, fun stuff planned later. Thank you. I'm like, this, he would wear a leather jacket, and then this is, like, not a flannel, but, like, a button-down. But just like with kind of that pattern on it. I have a shirt that looks like that. Um, 
I've used I've used for my Robin Hood cosplay before, and that's what the shirt's based on, to be honest. Yeah, New York City was really cool. Uh, assuming that, assuming that's what your con, your comment is in regards to, it was really cool. And I, well, I was only there for a, a couple of days. I did a lot of stuff, and there's more stuff than that. That's just what comes to mind. Um, I went to, I walked across the Brooklyn Bridge. There's something else that I did too. I did, I did a lot of things. I'll have to list them out sometime. But it was really cool. I, it was cool live, like not living somewhere, visiting somewhere that had such a robust public transportation system. Because it's so much different to what you experience in a lot of cities where it's like you have to have a car. Here it's like you go anywhere, you just walk down into the subway station and then you are in a different place in a, you know, a little bit later. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I was correcting what you were referring to. But yeah, it, it was really cool. And like I went up there because I wanted to see the camp exhibit at the Met. Because that's exactly the type of fashion that I love. Um, things like the flamingo hat and the um, the like TV dinner vegetable dress thing. I don't know what technically would be called. It was kind of like a cape, almost like something you had your arms. And it was it was cool. I got to see all that. I went to a lot of museums. I did like all the quintessential New York things. And I laughed because, like, before I went up there, my grandma heard that I was only going up there for three days. And she was like, you're never going to be able to do anything in three days in New York. There's so much stuff to do. And I only got to scratch the surface of a lot of things because I was only there for three days. Because that was how long I could afford to be up there and take off work and stuff. So I would definitely like to be up there for more than just the three days. But I, I crammed a lot of stuff into the three days. <laughs> I got to see it, a lot of things, and when I was telling my grandma and my aunt about it later, they were like, you did all that in three days? I'm like, yeah, I did. Because, like, some of the things, like, when I went to the Museum of Natural History, I didn't get to, like, explore a lot of the stuff, because I got there right before they were closing, actually. I went to Central Park. I uh, had a really expensive lox bagel at the Ritz Hotel that's right across from Central Park. Which is different than the Ritz in London, apparently. It's, they're different things. But it's still, like, a really fancy hotel. In a fancy place. And I got a fancy bagel. Um, so, I, I did a lot of things like that. Walked through Central Park. And I feel like there's still more that I'm forgetting. Because I did so much stuff in the three days. Um, but, like, doing that much stuff in a short period of time does require some finagling and some planning um you have to precisely know like i'm going to be at this place at this time and figure out and do a lot of like i can spend this long here then i have to go to this place so like museum of natural history i got there right before it closed they let me in but i had like 15 minutes so i just found the dinosaur exhibit of course because i had to of course go to see the dinosaurs and I got to look around the dinosaur exhibit, and I stayed there until I got kicked out, basically. <laughs> until they're like, this is, like, you have to leave now. So I'm saying that over the PA, and I was like, okay, I'll leave now. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it, it was a lot in three days. I could travel normally with people and be like, like, oh yeah, we'll do this, this, and this. And spend a normal amount of time doing things. When I'm traveling somewhere if it's far away. I would rather spend less time doing more things. And getting to at least know what those things were like. Than spend more time doing less things. And then still have a bunch of things. And I'm like but I wanted to know what that was like. Because I've already paid a lot to go on a plane somewhere. I want to make the most of it. And that usually means going a lot of places. And requires a lot of very careful planning on my part. But I'm also good at doing the planning, if I do say so myself. So it works out well. 
it's probably a bit more hectic than a lot of people would enjoy. Because <laughs> I'm like, it's time to go here now. Um, it's not a very, it's not a, like a loose schedule, usually. Unless there's things that I have to, like, certain museums that have to be at certain times for tickets I bought or whatever. But it requires, basically, like, being ready to, like, you chill when you're at the place, but then in between places, like, go, go, go. So I can definitely understand it's a style of traveling that not everybody would like. But when I'm traveling by myself, I'm like, this this is fun. I enjoy it, even if it's hard, even if it's sometimes kind of stressful because you're like, well, I have to hurry up and get on this bus and hope that the timing works out correctly so I can get to the airport on time. So I can understand that that's not how everybody likes traveling and that's definitely valid. But on like all the trips I've done before, that's basically how it's been. How it's been, and it's still satisfying because you still spend when you're at the time, like however much time you've allowed to be at those places. You still spend that time enjoying what you're doing, and you know relaxing and savoring that experience. But it's mostly just in between experiences. You don't waste time. You hurry. Oh, I went on a scavenger hunt also when I was up there for stuff that was part of the Color Museum's, like, scavenger hunt. So there was a whole bunch of little stores and stuff like that. Um, and, like, little restaurants and tattoo parlors and little, like, newsstand-type places that had special prizes that you got as finding them as part of the Color Factory's, like, collaboration with them. So I did that a lot on the last day I was there, and because my flight was delayed, but it, I learned that before I got to the airport that my flight was delayed, I had, like, had a couple extra hours, because I was like, your flight's been delayed by two hours. And I was like, good, I don't have to be at the airport for two more hours then. So I had time to do, like, the little scavenger hunt and stuff. I went on, there's a, a carousel, um, it has fish, I can't remember what it's called, um, it's kind of by the Statue of Liberty. But it's got like a, it's a really unique carousel because it's like got fish in it. And the fish like go up, like they move like fish, like they flutter like that. And they go up in the air. So they're moving the way that fish move. And there's like things in the middle like reeds and stuff that are shifting. Um, might be called Carousel of Sea Glass or something. It was really cool. It was, I went there after I went to the Statue of Liberty. It was a lot of fun. But yeah. Um, I did that in 2019 as well, in September, the beginning of September. So, those, those are the places that I've traveled. I did my Florida road trip. I've been different places all over Florida. Went to Denver, went to Houston, went to Costa Rica, and went to New York City. So I am looking forward definitely to when it's safe to travel again, especially traveling out of state and traveling to other places, which I know will be a while, but I'm definitely looking forward to it because I do miss that. I miss going to be like, yeah, I'm going to go on a trip for three days to somewhere and, you know, jam pack it with different things. That's something I've definitely missed in the past year. I personally passed through New York, went to Niagara Falls, New York and Ontario. Cool! How was Niagara Falls? I've heard it's really cool. It's one thing that, like, when I was up there, I was like, ooh, how far is it? And I saw it was pretty far from New York City, so I didn't end up going there. But it's somewhere I've always wanted to visit. That's really cool, though. I'm sure it's amazing how big it is. And I've heard the upstate New York and by Canada and stuff like that, like, by Ontario is pretty. I've never been to that area, but I've heard there's, like, lots of pretty forests and stuff like that. But, yeah. Traveling, doing stuff like that, and road trips and stuff like that is something fun. I've never actually traveled, like, I've traveled some places within Florida with, like, my mom and my sister. Um, I've never traveled anywhere on a plane with anyone else other than just myself, which I've been fine with because, like, I'm perfectly fine traveling by myself. And if I had other people that were like, oh, I want to go with you, 
I'd be happy for other people to come with me. But usually it's like, I have money to do it, but then not everybody else has the money to do it. Um, and rather than me going like, I'm not going to go on the trip because like someone else in my family or whatever doesn't want to pay to go on this trip, then be like, well, I guess I can't do it. Um, so like, it's nice and I understand like not everybody likes traveling by themselves, which is definitely valid. But I do happen to enjoy it, which has benefited me because I've been able to do more travel thingies. Cool. That's so cool you can go under it. I bet it's pretty loud, but I bet it's also really cool just seeing like how powerful it is. That sounds really pretty. Especially because I know it's like really, really big. It's, am it's amazing when you think about things like that, they're like, this exists in nature. It's like a thing. That's cool. But like, one part of Trow Ridge Road, when I went through the Rocky Mountains, that was kind of wild just because it was so much different than Florida. There's part of the road that's at an altitude of like 11,500 something feet. Um... But I want to note, I, if I'm remembering correctly, pilots have to use oxygen supplementation um, and have the oxygen mask fl if they're flying above 10,000 feet in like an open airplane, you know. Um, so I was just walking around 11,000 feet up in the air, 11,000 feet above sea level, which is just wild to think about how many feet that is. I mean, Denver itself is like... A, a mile above sea level. This is like twice Denver's altitude. It's like two miles above sea level, basically. Which, living in Florida and being at sea level versus being two miles above sea level is just wild. I made the mistake while I was out of my car at the 11,000 foot altitude, which, like, you can breathe, but the air is just so thin. I made the mistake of jogging. A little bit back to my car because I was in a hurry I went to look at the edge of the mountain and I looked and I was like well this is pretty I took some pictures and I jogged back to my car and I regretted that because it was the air was very very thin and I did not jog very far but I was very out of breath by the time I got back to my car and it took me a while before I caught my breath it was wild <laughs> But yeah, that, that's, there's a lot of things I miss because of COVID. Um, and, like, I miss being able to see friends more often. And I miss being able to, like, do my shows and stuff. Like, my murder mystery shows. And have a job that I like a lot. And it's a lot better than job that I've had for longer um more interesting things to do and more aligned with you know my my goals and stuff I miss that but I also miss traveling both I miss traveling from doing the murder mystery shows but also I miss being able to be like you know what I think it's time to go on vacation and then going hey this place sounds cool I've never been here before but it sounds neat I miss being able to do that. That was a lot of fun. So that's one thing I'm like, well, when everything eventually, you know, becomes like you can travel again and it's, you know, safe to do so. I'm really looking forward to being able to go places again. Because there's so many cool things out in the world. And like this time I do it, I'm like, I am going to save up money and not go into debt as I have done on other journeys I have done. Um, but, and like, traveling can be pretty cheap. Traveling with airplanes gets kind of expensive because plane tickets are kind of expensive. Um, so, like, <laughs> traveling, there's a lot of places you can travel just driving to, and there's a lot of ways you can save money on all that. 
and there's a lot of ways you can you know maximize how much money you're spending versus your experiences you're getting so like traveling doesn't have to be that expensive especially if it's if you're driving somewhere and you can bring your own food like shelf staple foods like canned goods or whatever to eat you can save a lot of money that's how I saved a lot of money on my road trip because I brought along so much food from home and I ate things in restaurants if it was something I wanted to have fancy and like I got McDonald's and stuff sometimes um, but for the most part it's like I have a food I'm going to eat this can of beef stew or this individual soup cup. Uh, I learned not all those things are good room temperature, so that is a thing to remember. <laughs> but I was able to save a lot of money and save a lot of money by sleeping in my car on campsites instead of staying in a hotel. This didn't always fare well, especially when it came to mosquitoes. It wasn't a vibe for the Everglades. But it was it was still a good way to save money. I'm glad that I did do that. Hotels are definitely nicer, more comfortable than sleeping in your car, though, especially when you have a smart car and you have to sleep diagonally across the back. And even when you have the seats down, there's still not enough room for you to stretch out. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely got woozy, and I was like, whoa. It's like that, as soon as I got my car, I was like, I can't breathe. I'm like, that wasn't a good plan. It sounded good in theory. <laughs> Be like, I'm going to jog. It wasn't good in reality. It, it wasn't a vibe. Okay. I'm going to fix the mouth in a minute. I think for the background, I'm going to do a, a wider version of the stripes that I did for winter last week. Let's see if this paintbrush will work. Mm, no. Too, too dry with paint. And I know whose fault that is. Ugh. I just want, uh, because, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to make stuff with resin. And the resin that I have has two parts to it. It has, like, the resin itself and, like, the hardener. This is good and everything. It's good until you get the bottles wet with resin because you touch them with resin hands. But because you only touched it with one half of the resin materials, it doesn't ever harden, and it's wet, and it's sticky, and greasy, and then it gets on your paintbrush, because you had it all on the table. And that was I just put my hand in. So my hand's kind of greasy now, with one half of the resin mixture. Story of my life. Okay. Dip this in a bit of water. We'll smooth out the paint a little bit more. But yeah, I have many travel adventures and something that like I look forward to being able to do at some point in the future. Because it helps shake up routine and remind you of life. Like, yeah, there's a lot of cool things in the world. A lot of things you've not seen before. So especially if you tend to get bored a lot, then you're reminded like, yeah, there are cool and interesting things. I just, you know haven't discovered them. But yeah. It's been fun reminiscing about a lot of those trips because a lot of them I haven't really like thought that much about for a bit. So it's been nice to kind of have the nostalgia of like yeah I did these things. And like traveling is also cool because I think it's a good way of if traveling by yourself is something you can do and that you enjoy doing. Because, um, again, I know not everybody wants to and not everybody can. And that's totally valid. Regardless of what your reasoning for not traveling by yourself or whatever is. 
Um, but if you can do it, it's still really affirming, I think, to be able to be like, yeah, I did this by myself. I did this and it, you know, everything turned out, turned out well because of my own efforts. Like it's empowering to have the control over your environment like that and to be able to be like, I did this thing. I figured out how to solve this problem that came up and uh, my time schedule worked out okay and I got to the airport on time. Especially with summer harder, like when I went to Costa Rica and I didn't speak Spanish hardly at all. A lot of things were a lot harder, but it was that much more fulfilling when I got back home. I'm like, whoa, by the end I was like buying bus tickets and groceries and stuff in Spanish. So it was really cool. Alrighty. Well, I'm just letting the... I need to draw eyebrows. I was looking at his face and I was like, something is missing. I was just chilling. Not thinking about it. I like eyebrows. Kind of important. Just, just you know, a little bit. And I would have forgotten about these eyebrows. <laughs> but I now looked at his face and been like, something looks like it's missing. All right. Because I was looking like his face looks kind of naked. And I was like, oh, that that's why. Picture's eyebrows being fairly bushy. She doesn't strike me as the kind of person that would be like, I'm going to pluck my eyebrows. I'm going to make them a nice shape. It's the kind of person that's like, this is how my eyebrows grow and this is how they're going to be. I'm going to also add a little, some little stubble here in a minute. After I finish the eyebrows. But yeah. It's a nice temperature here today, so later I'm going to be doing some yard work and stuff. I've been trying to work on more housekeeping type things recently of just keeping my spaces cleaner, for example. I have the problem, like, because I work outside the house, and because right now I'm not doing murder mystery shows, which require other people riding my car, sometimes my car has gotten pretty messy inside because I eat lunch in there, let's say, or I otherwise eat while I'm driving, and I've just had the habit of, like, I'll just put the trash on the floor, I'll pick it up later, and then not picking it up, and it just becoming a really big pile. I don't like that. That's not a vibe. So I made the the new because like me setting rules for myself is really helpful, um, especially because because I have ADHD. Um, setting rules for myself and being like this is a line that I'm not going to cross. That's really helpful. So my new rule to myself is that I every time I leave my car at night, let's say. I have to take all the trash with me. If I made trash during the day, I must bring it with me. I'm not allowed to leave trash in my car anymore. If I like, if I allow it, like it's okay to leave the trash in here, then it will pile up again. I, I mean, I can leave it in the in the car if it's in the trash bag, but it either has to be in the bag. So I'm trying to get in the habit of putting it in the bag, like as soon as I'm done, you know, eating something. And not putting it on the floor at all. That. And also. Trying to. Um, also trying to like. If I have other stuff in my car. Like um, a face mask. Or other stuff like that. I have to bring it in. When I leave my car. If I have. Basically, yeah, anything that I have has to go in. Face mask. 
if I eat something, I'm like, hey, this lid off this thing would be great for a weird art project. That's a real, real reason to keep stuff. <laughs> then I have to, at that point, be like, all right, well, I'm going to bring it in with me now, and I'm not allowed to leave stuff in my car anymore. My, my new rule. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, if I make that my rule, and I stick to it, and it's just like a blanket, like, I don't even argue with myself, like, should I do this? Should I not do it? I just bring stuff in. Then I won't have a problem of trash being in my car, because there'll never be a chance for it to build up. As long as I stick to this rule. That's the important thing. <laughs> Driving by yourself sounds so cool, and honestly, kudos, you've been able to do that. I don't think I could personally do that, and that's really impressive. Well, thank you. I, 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 I'm like, I definitely acknowledge the fact that it's something that not everybody can do, because it is hard, and it requires both a lot of planning and a lot of confidence... And a lot of, like, there's nobody to ask a question to, and you're on your own in a place, so you have to figure out, like, any problem that arises, unless you want to make a phone call and be like, hey, what should I do about this? Like, you have to figure it out. <laughs> so I, I definitely acknowledge it as being hard. But thank you. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> no brows, Walter. Yeah, Walter Walter just shaved off his eyebrows. He's like, what? If I'm not going to pluck my eyebrows, I'm just going to get rid of them. Maybe someone's like, hey, your eyebrows are really bushy. He's like, well, I'll just shave them off. Yeah. No, no, brow, no eyebrows, Walter. <laughs> I would love to hear what story he would give for why he has no eyebrows. Did they get burnt off in a fight? Someone shaved them off while he was sleeping. Nobody knows. All they know is he has no eyebrows. I wanted to use similar colors for them, but not the same colors. They both have the same color blue in their portraits. But they have Winterhead purple and Walter has green, so Lily's is going to follow a similar structure so the same color blue and then another color i'll figure out what color but i'm excited to complete all the dwyer family portraits but yeah okay yay I need my really tiny brush. My really tiny brush. Because I'm going to do stubble. Which I've never painted before. So it's going to be interesting. Probably actually blew food up. That that that's probably why. That's probably why. He'd be like, I can cook, and then like he just erupts into a fireball and burns off his eyebrows. I don't know. I I can see that happening though. Okay, so this is me being like, hmm, how do I draw stubble? Like I know where stubble goes. On a face. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think. Maybe, because I want to make the stubble, but I don't want to make it, I don't want to make it, like, weird and unnatural looking. So, I'm, right now I'm just trying to go, hmm, I want to mix paint up on something, what should I use? That's, that's what the looks of like hmm what is this because basically this is me just being like I'm gonna put it on top of a paint thing 
I want to dilute the brown down to a really, really light wash. And then paint a beard shadow. I think this will work. We're going to find out. I think that works. You trying to remember where does the beard shadow go? I only know this because of how many times I've painted fake facial hair on my face. I had to learn like, oh, this is where the beard goes. Yeah, I like how this is turning out. I didn't want to have to draw every single piece of stubble on his face because it's a lot of stubble and it also I think would look kind of unnatural because it's like a shadowy like a lot of stubble you can't see like ooh there's a piece of stubble it's just kind of a shadow that you see on a lot of dudes faces so yeah and then I'm, I'm looking at one of the references just like, hmm, where does this double go? Okay. That's the thing I'm enjoying about these paintings and these portraits is that I'm having to really get better at a lot of art things that I've never drawn before. Better at drawing people's clothing. Better at painting things like beard stubble. Because it's something, again, that I've, I've never painted beard stubble before. Never, I've, again, drawn beard shadow on my face, my own face with makeup. There's a difference between that and trying to figure out, like, hmm, how do I add it to my portrait? <laughs> on my face, I can just add some dark makeup in this general area. Which is kind of the logic I use for this. Like, when I draw stubble on my face for cosplay or whatever, or any other, you know, photo shoot or whatever I want to do, I don't draw each individual piece of stubble. I don't know if that's the right name for pieces of stubble, but I'm going to call it pieces of stubble. I've had to study the shape of like, where did stubble go? <laughs> so I have this, so I have this random knowledge. Okay. I'm almost done on this. I'm almost done with them. I want to add a little bit more to the background. It, my idea worked well. It's, every time I do something with a painting, and it's an actual analog painting, not digital, then I'm like, well, if I do this and it's wrong, I can't do anything about it. So I hope it's good. That's all I can say. <laughs> okay. Got a little little chest shadow because I can picture him having chest hair Darn it, where's my paintbrush I should have found a really small one I was just using to draw haha -ha. okay just draw a little chest hair stubble in Photoshop I'll erase where I started drawing the little pieces of stubble before deciding not to draw pieces of stubble. All right, soak, soak my brushes before I forget. And then, think about what to do with this. to draw a triangle. I don't want their backgrounds to both be the same and just be with flannelly kind of patterns. But I want the backgrounds to have the same feel. And this is like, this is a way, in my opinion, to add a little more visual interest to it. All right. Aha. Originally I was just going to do one triangle, but I'm like, 
this is a cool pattern. Kind of hails back to the Richard background. Shave your stubble pieces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're like, go shave your stubble pieces. <laughs> I love that. That's hilarious. That, that's what I'm going to just refer to it as is from now on. Shave your stubble pieces. I don't know what they're called. They're called stubble pieces. <laughs> Someone breaks the dress code of somewhere that's not allowed to have a beard. And you're just like, shave your stubble pieces. <laughs> Based on that logic, people with beards have long stubble pieces. Be like, whoa, that's nice long stubble pieces you have there. What do you call that shape of long stubble pieces above your lip? That, that just that tickles me a lot. I love that. Uh, that's that's going to be my amusement for the rest of the day. Just thinking about the term stubble pieces. Go shave your stubble pieces. <laughs> but anyways, um... But, yeah, almost, almost done with the background. Okay, now I'm going to accent the leather jacket. Mm -hmm. I think with blue. Well, me just sitting there and being like, hmm, with me trying to figure out what I was doing. Figure out what I wanted to do. This reminds you of the, you've had someone call a cosplay wig a hair hat. Oh my gosh. A hair hat. <laughs> I love that. That's hilarious. Okay, now that that's also going to amuse me for the rest of the day of thinking about um, my collection of hair hats. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to un unsee that, that term for wigs now. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm here for that. <laughs> I need to buy a new hair hat. Whoa, that's a great hair hat you're wearing. <laughs> I love that. I mean, it's not wrong. <laughs> that, that reminds me that one time a couple weeks ago we had coleslaw, like the cabbage and stuff in the fridge, but just not made into coleslaw yet. It was like the shredded like coleslaw mix, but you still had to put the coleslaw dressing on it. And I was trying to think of like what to refer <laughs> to the. Um, I was trying to think how to refer to the, like the coleslaw part without the coleslaw. And I ended up because my mom was like, "What are you talking about?" And I was kind of exasperated, and I was just trying to think like what to refer to it as. But my my brain was like not thinking, and I was like, "The spaghetti part." So now when I see the lettuce, and it's, I mean, the lettuce, the cabbage and carrots and stuff that's already cut up for coleslaw, but I'm just like, that's the spaghetti part, yeah, that, that's what it's called. <laughs> Hair hat. <laughs> I love that. Yes, every time I think about that, I'm definitely going to be laughing. It's going to be the kind of thing that will be just like at work and I'll just start laughing and my coworkers will be like, why are you laughing? And I'll just be like, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> but inside I'm just thinking about hair hats. Cabbage spaghetti! And it's shaped like spaghetti. You could pick it up with a fork if you really wanted to. If you cooked it like it was, it would kind of look like spaghetti. <laughs> And it's kind of like pasta without sauce when it's just sitting there in the bag, unflavored. <laughs> so that that's that's the new name for that. Kind of like how, um, probably a couple years ago, I was trying to think of what a spool. Not, I was trying to think of what a head of lettuce was called, and I ended up calling it a spool of lettuce. Because <laughs> my logic, as I came up with this, was like, it's. It's a thing, 
there's multiple ones in a package sometimes. It's like all wrapped around itself and you peel it off. And my brain was like a spool of lettuce. It's one of those times again that I was, my mom was like, what are you talking about? I was like, uh, um, and I was like, couldn't remember what a head of lettuce was called. I was like, a spool of lettuce. So now I, I joke about like, hey, let's get some more spools of lettuce. <laughs> but yeah. Hair hat. Stubble pieces. yeah yes I'm, okay I'm glad you also love a pool of lettuce because like it's fitting it it describes what it is a spool of thread is a thing you could pick it up and it's like a thing that has stuff on it that you peel off so and like you know you get three spools of lettuce in a bag together <laughs> just, just how it works but yeah, w words are funny, especially things people say if they don't know the word for something, or they can't remember what the word for it is, and your brain's like, oh, let's describe this. It's like, this, this will work, people will understand what you mean. But yeah. I'm just, I'm tracing the lines that I added earlier, um, where I drew the lapels of this leather jacket. And I'm almost done with that. And then I want to add the little eye sparkle. And then I'll be done. I like to picture that this leather jacket is what Walter was wearing during the dancing on the bar scene. All right, Oops, I need the same paintbrush back again. But yeah, I've noticed I've gotten a lot better at drawing different parts of things or thinking about like, hmm, how should I draw clothing? So it's, it's a lot of fun and helpful to my art skills to draw all these and fun just fun in general making art of characters that I really love that's something I just do in my free time anyways <laughs> so like streaming it is cool oops it looked like there was water higher up on the paper so it's gonna drip down Oh, and by the way, soon I might be able to start streaming games, because that's something I wanted to do for a while. Uh, the thing holding me back from it is that my laptop is incredibly slow, and it always is slow, and it doesn't have enough things like enough RAM to play a lot of games that I want to play, or it will play them, but it will lock up a bunch. Not a vibe. Not when you're trying to stream. I tried when I first started doing these art streams, tried using my laptop to use my webcam and put my webcam on this and stream from my computer. It didn't work. People could hear me, but they couldn't see me because it couldn't process the webcam and streaming at the same time. That sucked. And I was like, well, my laptop itself works good. It's pretty old. It's almost 10 years old, but it still works really well. Um, so I'm not ready to get rid of it yet. To get and to get another laptop with that much RAM as much as I would like would be expensive. I know there are ways to upgrade RAM, but there's not a way to upgrade the RAM in my computer because I did check that on the website. You check if you can upgrade your RAM. Um, but my parents realized recently that in the house we have a computer that we've forgotten about. It's a desktop computer, not a laptop. But my dad thinks it has a pretty decent amount of RAM and a pretty good processor and stuff like that. So because of that. What I want to do is, my dad has to reformat that and like get it ready. I can't just use it as it is, but, and I have to test it then. But if I can test it, I can see if uh, it will work. Because if it even has a little bit more RAM on it than my current computer, and a little bit better processing power, it probably would work. 
I think it's a bit newer than my computer as well. So I wouldn't have a, I wouldn't have a, um, like a laptop that I could game from, but I would have a desktop that I could game from. And if I have one and it will game, then I'll see like, can it stream? Because I would like to stream games. Like I may not have a regular schedule streaming games only because I'm pretty busy right now with a bunch of stuff. But I would like it to be something like I do my art stream and then sometime, you know, maybe during the week, maybe I do a, a game stream. Even if it's not a very long stream, I wouldn't have time right now to do a stream of like three or four hours, but maybe for like, you know, an hour or so stream. Um, but yeah, so that's something I just realized like a couple nights ago that I might actually have a computer that I could stream on. So I'm really excited about that because that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, it would be fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So I, I have fingers crossed that the computer does have enough power to do that. Because again, that's something I want to do for a while. I think it'd be super fun. Um, like, I, I don't have very much experience with a lot of games. So I don't know like, oh, I would play this, this, and this. Like, I would definitely play some Stardew Valley. I don't currently have the desktop version of it because my computer is slow. I would play some classic arcade games if I could find them. I know I, I own like Dig Dug and uh, like I'm not good at it, but Galaga, um, I think that's what's called. If I miss said that name, I'm sorry. Um, I'm like Pac-Man, I might have another one. I don't know. Uh, there's some other games I would like to try to find online that I did enjoy playing back a long time ago like old arcade games so but yeah I, there's a lot of things like that that I would and there's another game I can't remember what it's called but it's supposed to be like a cool puzzle game uh, but I've never it's like an indie game I'll have to look up what it's called because it seems really cool and I was like oh that that's neat I have no idea what it's called um it's like a game where there's like different rules in the world, like of how things work, but you have to figure out what those are to solve the puzzles. It has a really cool aesthetic. I don't remember what it's called, though. I just saw something about it a couple weeks ago, and I was like, I want to play that. I know it was like $15 on Steam. Um, I, other than that, I remember nothing about it. But yeah. Ooh! That would be a lot of fun. I've never played Among Us, to be honest. I, I'd be definitely down for that. It's like As long as it happened on a day that I was, you know, available in the evenings, I would love that. Yeah, that would be so fun. It would be fun to also, I know that, that Mal has played it a lot too, and that would be really fun. <laughs> okay, good. I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only person that has not played it. Because, uh, like, everyone I know is like, ooh, Among Us. And I'm like, I've never played it, though. <laughs> like, I, I've seen so much about it. Like, I kind of understand, like, the, the gist of it. But I've never played it. So, <laughs> yeah. That would be so much fun. I would, I would definitely be down for that. So, yeah, there's things like that that I would finally be able to do. Like, I might, maybe with Among Us, might be able to get by with that on my computer. But, like, my computer right now, it's okay with when I played the arcade game Dig Dug. It's not really okay with Ace Attorney even. And I want to play that. And I've gotten very, only a tiny bit into that game. Mostly because uh, it's very slow when my computer plays it. <laughs> you're not a great liar and you're always sus. So, yeah. <laughs> it does look like a fun game to play with friends. Especially because it's like, you have to be sneaky about whatever. And like, I don't, again, I don't really know that much about it. But it's like, you have to lie to people and be sneaky. And like, I might be good at it. <laughs> but it would, it still sounds like so much fun. And like, I like the aesthetic of the little spacesuit thingies. That I sure, I'm sure are not just called spacesuit thingies, but <laughs> little beans. <laughs> little that little beans is a good description of them. 
being a ghost in the game and haunting people, that sounds fun. Okay, I'm just going to call them little beans from now on. They're little beans that someone has, you know, put a little face on, like a little mask. Yeah, Ace Attorney. I think I've only played, I played the very first story in the first one, and I'm playing on the second story in the, the first, the first Ace Attorney game. I'm only about halfway through that or whatever, because again, like, my computer will not lock up, but it will freeze up, and it will take it, like, not when I'm clicking on the thing so much, it's kind of slow on that, but mostly freezes up when it changes scenes, it might freeze it for about 15 seconds, so it's, it makes it kind of cumbersome, which is the reason why I haven't been motivated to play a lot of games that I have, because I'm like, I'm gonna get into it, it's gonna take it several minutes to not be locked up on the main screen, uh, and then it might work, but if it changes scenes, it will lock up. Even the game Fae Fever, which is like an indie game, pretty simple graphics. Whenever it changed scenes, it was a lot for my computer, and it's not even that complex of a game. So I'd hate to see if something like Stardew would probably very be very, very slow. Well, I'm, I'm done with my stream, so I'm going to show the picture now, but you got to the end of the stream, so yay! I hope you enjoy your food. But yeah, so I'm hyped though about about hopefully being able to game soon and stream that and actually be able to play games with friends. Because right now, with the exception of very minor basic things, uh, it wouldn't really work out very well. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's not any fun. Like I'm trying to play a game and it like locks up and I'm like, so hopefully the new computer. Like, it's a, it's a computer we've had for a while, but my dad can reformat it so then I can use it. Um, and my dad's good with computers. He's, like, he knows how to do stuff like that, so it's not an, it's not an issue. Uh, but, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And, like, I hope it works out because that would be a lot of fun. But anyways, my painting of Walter Dwyer. And soon, I have scanned it. I'm going to be posting the winter... And I did, I did post the Wallace one. So I just need to post Winter and then Walter. Uh, so I'll be posting these on social media soon. But here is um, Beef with Gun with Stubble Hairs. But anyways, yeah. This little stubble pieces. <laughs> beef with Gun with Stubble Pieces. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you enjoy the stubble pieces. I'm glad that I chose to do this method instead of trying to do little tiny dots with a paintbrush. Like you can see, like I started doing on his chin. You kind of see those little tiny dots. <laughs> yeah. The, the stubble pieces came out well. <laughs> so thank you. But yeah, thank you to everybody for coming to my stream. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have had to draw tiny stubble pieces and I think it would look... It would look weird... Because it's like, it's a beard shadow. It's not like if somebody just has like a couple little beard, like longer beard hairs. Like just a thin chin beard. Um, so, because of that. I'm just laughing because I said chin beard. and I, I don't know if there's a real name for a chin beard. There probably is. But anyways... But yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad that I decided to do this method and I'm glad that I had a weird little paint cap to mix up paint on so I could do the stubble pieces. And you know, if it's, if it's like a beard shadow, it's ghost stubble pieces. Jaw beard. You got chin, chin beard versus jaw beard. It's like, what kind of beard does somebody have? Or lip beard. That's what you can call a mustache. But yeah. But yeah, it was a lot of fun painting Walter. Um, this is going to be up on YouTube at some point when I finally get around to posting uh, the other ones I haven't put on YouTube yet. But yeah. Um, and again, I stream art on every Friday at 2.45 Eastern Standard Time. Um, so yeah, and next week I'm going to be painting uh, Lily Dwyer, who is the daughter of Walter Dwyer. So yeah, thank you so much everybody for coming out. As always, this was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun chatting with y'all. And I hope everybody has a good day. And thank you for coming out to my painting. 
Uh, it, it always brings me a lot of joy, the fact that people come out each week to watch me paint. So thank you. So, bye!